What's up, YouTube? Slim Tim's Dirty Tanks bringing you a spring update out here in the greenhouse. We're having one last freeze watch, even though I already got some seedlings planted, just trying to keep it warm out here. And basically, first update of the video uh, year for the greenhouse. So when we come back, I'll show you the fish tank and feeding them right quick, what I'm doing to adjust the pH lately, and also what's going on with the sun. So sit back and enjoy the video. Cycle just stopped, so we're gonna wait until one uh, kicks back on again. Got some additions to the sump now and some modifications. I went and installed a bleed off valve, <clears throat> excuse me, from my main line here right after the check valve. So, that the reason why is I didn't have a valve on my fish tank, but I have valves on my grow beds. So either I would have to overflow my beds and have constant problems of the bell siphons not working right, or I restrict the flow to the grow beds and then my fish tank wanted to overflow too fast and into the floor instead of my keeping up with my overflow over here. So I just went ahead and installed the bleeder, bleed off valve. And now like I said, I got a constant cycle of water going through my sump here. Now what you just heard burp here underneath my hand is the outlet from the circulation filter and like I said went ahead and dropped it down into the water now it helps aerate the water too and no more splashing drop the overflow pipe down to be either submerged or just barely trickling the sur surface of the water let it, less uh, splashing once again and also aerates sorry finger I'm trying to make sure I don't drop my phone in this water here the uh, bell siphons, when they kick on, they air, air will rate the water as well. So I got a lot of aeration. I have cleaned out the sump this past winter. Got a lot of grit and debris and bark left over. And we well, still got a little bit of sand in that corner. Oh well. Like I said, I used bark, driftwood, um, trying to get my pH to drop because it's locked in at 8.2 due to my well water being high calcium carbonite, which is a buffer of high pH, lucky me. So that's another reason why some of my aquariums inside have high pHs as well. So I'm wanting to set myself up a rain barrel design off of some barrels or maybe two more IBCs and I black them out instead of having to use the water from the tap. All right, now it's gonna get really noisy and you ain't gonna be able to hear me for nothing. So let's watch this bell siphon action. Once it gets up to the top of the fan pipe in the grow bed, starts to draw all the air out of the cap of the bell siphon, and with that motion, bam, water flows right behind it. And here we go, we got three going. Yeah, once it's hitting that water that hard, you know it's all that splashing.
right there is a burp, uh, break of the bell siphon. The one right behind this one's got the brake siphon. And yes, the water level has raised a lot. This is about where I like to keep my water when the uh, beds start to fill back up. That way, whenever the water starts to get to the bottom of this pipe or the, this pipe, that means I need to do a top off if I don't have no siphon action. So that's basically another improvement I've done to my sump here as in the, the addition of the lead off valve with that coupling. I have a uh, water level now that I can go by and make sure I have enough water. And as you notice, that pump's already take, taking it down quite a bit. And like I said, all that air rating, man, I wish I could pick up all those air bubbles in the water. You just see the surface ones. Let's go check out the fish tank and give them some feed in action. All right. <clears throat> well, here we are at the fish tank. I use Koi Select for my Comet Goldfish, and as you can see, they're ready. I didn't finish talking about what I'm doing to fix the pH in the last clip with the sump action going on, or the bell siphoning, my bad. I'm using muriatic acid, and uh, I'm not going to recommend any doses on this video. Just basically, I'm just using it and experimenting with it and doing it in safe doses so I'm not stressing out my fish by dropping the pH too rapidly. So, once again, I'll ask, like I said, it's just it's each individual the results are different. Um, got a new addition to this fish tank. I removed the air pump. There's a reason why you see a little bit of a dripping off the zip tie right there. And I installed a spray bar. Once again, aerating the water. I wish I could have y'all see this, the aerate molecules, but it ain't gonna happen, I guess. This past winter, I don't know if y'all can see him down there. I lost my sucker fish. He was a little tiny guy. This guy right here, he's about 13 inches long. Someone turned him into the local aquarium I go to, saying that it was too big for their 20 gallon tank. Yeah, we know that story. So I went ahead and said I'll give him a good home and got him a good price. He's been really keep earning his keep. Since my other sucker fish died, I started having a real bad algae bloom. I need to finish painting this part right here off since I painted the rest of it green. I thought I wanted to have a little sun window. Bad idea. I'll go ahead and completely uh, black it out, or you know, black it out in other words. Which I, I like to use green. It still helps light up the tank a little bit. So they can have at least a little bit of white and you know, like I said my cover here, I got this hole covered up. But yep, plus also with that spray bar, you see the pellets, they get trapped right there in the streams and get shot down into the water. So everybody has a chance to get some. Also, way down there in the bottom, we'll still go ahead and show that off again. My drain at the bottom of the IBC I'm using to get gravity forced filtration in my solid remo solids removal filtration unit. Even though it's technically a rotation circulation filter, but what happens is instead of it go coming in and dumping straight to the bottom of the barrel and circulate back up from 290s and all that stuff, it helps get the sediments and stuff and use. Uh, foam and stuff of that nature to help trap it before it gets back to your overflow. What I do is I have it come in, go up inside of a three inch pipe and all the solids and water is forced downward and a you know gravity force once again. All the solids are forced to settle. Only clean water is allowed to rise back up to my overflow here. So and that's what you hear gurgling. Got me a little air tube here. It helps with the flow and oh, where are y'all? There you go. 
It helps with the uh, flow and keeping it constant instead of getting stuck up with air bubbles in the line. Yeah, I'm going to try to get down in here for you. So it's going all the way down to the bottom of the overflow before it turns out to the uh, sump. And I say it just helps keep the flow constant. You know, I can't see, the, see it, but it's pretty dirty down there in the bottom. About time to do another cleaning in there. Try to clean it every two months so we don't get too much of ammonia and spikes and stuff of that nature. Yep. On to the grow beds and give you a walk through. Here we are at grow bed one and two. I went ahead about two weeks ago when we started warming up. Down here in the south, I got myself some sweet peas seedlings. They had them on a good deal marked down, so I didn't have to start them from seed. So I just went ahead and got them as seedlings. And as you can see, they're already starting to attach to these uh, tomato cages and grow them really well. Basically, within two to three days, I saw a uh, re response to being aquaponicized. So, plus with the breaking of my pH, the nutrients actually can get up into my plants now. That was another issue I had last season was my plants were locking out the nutrients, wouldn't allow it to, to take it because it's such a high alkaline water as well. I didn't want that. But, as you can see here, man, look at this one. I just did this this morning. And it's already starting to attach itself immediately. Um, we'll start doing some seedlings of tomatoes soon. You know, start from seed. That's the reason why I haven't planted them yet. I was waiting for their last frost. Which, like I said, we got a freeze warning going on through to tonight. And it's spring on out from here. I said, here's the walkthrough as well. From my fish tank being behind me. You got your grow beds. Then your sump. Like I said, I went ahead and did this where I can be able to put viney stuff here. And be able to still access it from both sides. Or anything of that nature when I plant it here. I can access both size of the grow bed instead of having a dead spot where I can't reach. Once again, cucumbers will be in this bed again. That's the reason why I haven't tore down their net yet. Like I said, we had plenty, we had a good response with cucumbers last season. Got me some more seeds. I'm gonna drop them on in, in here once the temperature goes back up. For the overnight low temp, that is. And we'll have cucumbers. Over here, once again, broccoli's making a return. Got these as seedlings. Instead of starting from seed, see if I can have a different response compared to what I had last year as seedlings. Like I said, they just wasn't really full compared to what I got as these as seedlings. So that's another thing I'm learning here. Maybe I need to try to start all my stuff off in dirt before I just drop seed, seedlings straight into the grow media here. And as I stated, all that white stuff you've been seeing, that's the calcium car carbonate. Real bad. So like I said, I'm trying to break this and get rid of it. Now on the other end, sharing the grow bed with these broccolis is cauliflower. And you should have seen them when I first got them. This one right here ain't quite filled in all the way. But this is about what they look like. Just kind of puny, little tiny leaves. And then you get this, look at this. Bam! Great response already. I said this is one of the first leaves, these are my new leaves. So like I said, I'm out here constantly pruning off all these dead leaves as well. Trying to keep them, like this one right here. Bam. Trying to encourage new growth. Look at this one. I did have two right here, but they didn't make it. I think I might have broke off too many of the roots in the dirt. So we'll either do something right here at this corner. Maybe put some herbs of uh, cilantro, basil, some of that nature. Plus, you know, maybe do that in a couple of these dead spots throughout these beds where I know I can have some. Like right here. Maybe a couple herbs right here of cilantro and basil as well. Um, grow bed five and possibly rack bed. Yes, you heard me right. That's why my lettuce didn't do too well last season. They need to be in constant water instead of just a uh, field drain design. Now for the fifth grow bed, like I said, I'm still doing the part two video on how to make grow bed, you know, DIY grow beds yourself. And like I said, here's just a little kind of sample. I use wood glue, some pond liner, and that's about it. But y'all see that video soon. Like I said, it's been working a lot. I haven't got around to it. Now for the raft bed, I'm going to paint this out black. 
Like I said, it's the other half of the second IVC from the sump tank. I'm gonna glue this off so it don't have no leaks. Gonna have a constant height water in here with a styrofoam board. Well, here, I'm just gonna wait for the video before I discuss all that. And then once you back out to the beginning of my system, that's basically what you got. Like I said you got your circulation rotation filter. Going back to the sump. I got my fish tank going back to the sump with those overflow. Overflows from the grow beds. Feeds all right here in the center with the bleed off valve. And there's your setup. So I greatly appreciate everybody asking for this update. If you're still tuning in, JW Heiser, I'm gonna give you a shout out, man. You've been encouraging me to get this video out and I'm sorry, like I said, I've been working a lot lately and probably have a weekend off, people. <laughs> So there you go, people. So hit that like button. Leave your comments down below on a certain subject or video you would like me to cover individually about aquaponics and my learning experience. And as always, you WNS, welcome your new subscribers. Approaching 1400.